yes, but I, uh, I do not see myself. You too. Anyway. Yeah. You do her uh, learning now. I will up. <laughs> I will bunch up myself. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Taylor. Hello. How are you? Yeah. I'm. I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is the first time I've met you. No. Yep. Let me introduce right. a little bit about myself. Okay. Um, I'm. Uh, my name is Thu Do. Thu, and uh, my English name is Taylor Do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I can spell my English name is T A Y L O R. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm 19 years old, and I'm a student of social science and uh, humanities of Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Nice to meet well, you. Yeah, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, so, do you prefer to be called Tu or do you prefer to be called uh, Taylor? Um, yeah, you choose. I, I okay. prefer you call me uh, Taylor because, okay. uh, like, when pe like uh, foreign people uh, call my name, it's kind of weird, and I very, uh, but it was very funny. And I, oh. <laughs> I, I prefer, I prefer people call me uh, my English name. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, good. So my name is Tyler, and mm -hmm. it's nice to meet you as well. Um, I, I saw that you were a relatively new student. I've been here for a little over a year now. So. Yeah. 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 But, um, I have just be the the uh, students and uh, members of. HR team for over one month. So yeah, this is the fourth lesson in the project. Yeah, of mine. Okay. And I, yeah, it's a pleasure to have to, to, to join your lesson today. Oh well, great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, today I want to um, talk about film and arts. Hey, yeah, it's something weird here, right here, because like you are the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> In, yeah. The 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 video needs to be the the the, the interaction between teacher and uh, students, and mm -hmm. I am the one who speak <laughs> right now. I think we should change the role, right? I'm not the host right here. You know? Well, it's it's a little of both. Um, I teach very differently from many people, wow. um, and I believe that you know the teacher is not the person to talk at the front of the room, right? Some people say you know I talk you right. That's not teaching to me. To wow. me, a teacher is like a tour guide. You tell me what you want to see, and I show mm. you what what's there, right? Ah, okay. So. And so. <laughs> uh, we should like be uh, like we haven't known each other before. Like I haven't sent you any messages before about yeah. the recording today. Yeah, yeah just uh, to act like nothing happened before. Yeah, yeah. So, so I will. Uh huh. So let's start again or something. Yeah. So um, let me look at the uh, the prompt. I'm not used mm -hmm. to using prompts either. I actually don't follow lesson plans I just kind of go with whatever's happening so yeah, yeah. Um, our prompt uh, we're supposed to exchange information about film and art so do you like watching movies yeah I really like watching movies yeah okay. my favorite okay. kind of uh, movie is historical movies and okay. uh, romantic movies. How about wow. you? Um, I like um, anything that is about world history, and I like action movies. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and I especially like documentaries or movies that are based on true stories. Mm, yeah. Yep. So. Can you share with me some of your favorite documentaries, Vim? Uh, well, I don't really have the name of them. Um, some of them are like Band of Brothers or The Pacific, which is about the uh, the American Army during World War II. Um, mm. 
but I like to watch documentaries about many things. Um, I I especially like history before the year one thousand, mm. and it's, um, anything about the uh, history before zero is better. So I like old, old, old That's history. Good. Yeah, I, modern mm. history I don't like. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't interest me, especially American history. Um, after nineteen hundred, <laughs> American history doesn't really interest me, but. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to learn about the rest of the world because uh, in our schools, we don't really get to learn much besides Europe or America. So I, I would rather learn about the rest of the world because obviously there are more more places in the world than Europe or America. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting because um, in high school, that, you know, in high school in Vietnam, I study history as my like the most important subject for the entrance examination to university for myself. And yeah, I've learned a lot of uh, things from the history lesson mm -hmm. in my school, high school time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've learned, like we have chances to learn about the, the, the events in the past, uh, overseas, like in Europe, in in Western countries, and uh, like the World War One, World War Two, yeah, yeah, okay. and this, I'm very interested in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and we're we're kind of similar. We learn mostly about World War One or World War Two for the rest of the country, but mm -hmm. um, I took a class called Asian History and Culture, but it wasn't a good class. <laughs> Um, they they briefly talked about Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. Uh, we learned seventeen Chinese characters. We learned oh, how 17. to yeah. We le we learned how to use a Japanese dictionary, and we learned oh. how to use chopsticks, right? And so to me, that's there's a lot more to Asian culture than chopsticks and Chinese characters, right? <laughs> so that's not a very good class. But we also had to learn, you know. The map and where all the countries were and the capitals and things, but um, that class should have been much better. <laughs> yeah. But so, but um, well, good. And how about you? What's your what's your uh, favorite history movie? Um, history movie. I I like Chinese history cool movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they uh, about uh, the the. <laughs> How can I say in English? Like the the generation. No, like the the king, the. You know, how can I explain? Uh, let me check the dictionary or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you, if you. So. Um, like you the king. can. Yeah, the they called it. Like the generation, yeah. the of uh, like a year, many years that king. Dynasty. Dynasty. Yeah, the the generation of a king's family. Uh, like the like the Chu Dynasty or the no, Ming the, the Dynasty. Period, the period of his. Uh, yep. Like the the empire. Yep. So. Yeah, the empire. Yeah, if it's a specific king, we would say dynasty. Dynasty. And it means everything that happened while that family was in charge. Mm. Um, if you're talking about when there were so many different kings, then we would say feudal China. Feudal China. Oh. Yeah. And the, the previous word is... Can you type Dyna it? Too? The dynasty? Yep. Yeah. Dynasty, okay. Yep. Uh, like um, yeah. I I watch movies about many dynasties in Chinese in China, and um, yeah, I yeah most of them. Like I think the movies is not uh, exactly what the what happened in the past. <laughs> yeah, they remade a lot of uh like um, events and make this. Uh, unreal, yeah. Right. 
Yeah, so they're they're loosely based. Yeah, so loosely based. Yeah, loosely based means it's more <laughs> Hollywood than it, it's not as much true. It's more Hollywood. It's loosely based. Loosely based. Yeah. And. Is that right? Yeah. Loosely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, loosely based. Based. Yeah. Based. Mm-hmm. Yeah, loosely yeah. based. Yeah, so it's loosely based on history, right? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> loosely based. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, a lot, a lot of the Chinese films I've seen as well have been loosely based. But um, once in a while, I can find documentaries about archaeology. Archaeology. Right? And for instance, uh, I was watching one where they found a village that was 6,000 years old. And they said that was basically the, the, um, the origin of the Han ethnic people. That was their first city. So I thought that was very interesting that they were able to find that city. Yeah. Can you can you wait me a few minutes? My mm-hmm. mom memory's talking something. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I'm back. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, uh, because of the COVID nineteen, um, yeah, uh, my ha- my university um, changed the way, like changed uh, the the method of mm-hmm. teaching into uh, online teaching, mm-hmm. and uh, students uh, go go back to home in their hometown a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They included me, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I'm in my hometown right now. And okay. I I live with my parents right now. Okay. Yeah. And how far from Ho Chi Minh City is your hometown? Mm, it's about four hundred kilometers. Oh wow, a long way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have to uh, take a nine-hour train. Wow. By train yeah. to travel and from Nanchang to from my hometown to. Oh, you're in Nanchang. You're, you're in Nanchang. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm in Nanchang. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Have you oh, ever good. been in Nanchang? No, I I have been trying to come to Vietnam for a long, long time, but mm. every time they almost um start issue of visas, there's another outbreak. Oh, so okay. I've been waiting and waiting. Um. I'm yeah. hoping I can come either this summer or sometime this year, but we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll see. But I have a, a student who's also from that Na Chang, and <laughs> during a Tet holiday, she shared some photos of, from around her house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. like she is your student in Vietnam? Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. 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 I I should know her. <laughs> Well, she's uh, she's my age actually. She's closer to my age, so you might not know her. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, yeah. So, that's that's a long way to travel for university. <laughs> yes. Uh, but um, I moved to because I have to study in university, so I moved from Nanjing to Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because of the COVID nineteen, I come mm-hmm. back to my hometown. Mm, yep. uh, naturally, uh, my life had changed eight months ago. Like I moved to Ho Chi Minh City for studying and working, and yeah, I most of the time was there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I travel. I rent a room. In central of Ho Chi Minh City, and okay. travel by bus to my campus. Oh, okay. So, what? How do you like Ho Chi Minh City compared to Nanchang? Which do you like more? Of course, my hometown, Nanchang. <laughs> you know, 
um, Nietzsche had a very beautiful beast side, mm -hmm. and uh, um, but I also like Ho Chi Minh City because I choose this to be mm, the place that I will challenge myself to be more mature, to grow up and achieve more, achieve my same goals. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the environment in Ho Chi Minh City um, like pushed me up and like I have to um, be very active and um, like, very challenging. So. Mm -hmm. oh, good. And so, what what do you want to do after you graduate? What kind of job? Um, I I want to like work in education affair. Okay. But, uh, and uh, but also for the the like uh, external uh, external relations because mm -hmm. my major in hold uh, in my university is international relations mm -hmm. so I I hope that I can work uh, in the the right field that I've been mm -hmm. in for a long time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and do you uh, want to work for the government or do you want to work for a private company I want to work for the non-government organization <laughs> uh, NGO okay Good. yeah okay well excellent <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I don't like to be in a government um, organization, mm -hmm. and um, a private company is quite uh, competitive, mm -hmm. and I and maybe the environment is quite toxic, and I don't mm -hmm. like that. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. So. For international relations, how about what do you think uh, movies or art can help you with with international relations? Yeah, this is a very good question. You know, because I I study uh, international relations, mm -hmm. so there are many subjects that uh, support my uh, my mindset and the way I think, the way I. Uh, judge the way I consider an issues and everything like that and so when I uh, I watch a movie I can see the way uh, China want to expand their uh, uh, effects and um, the, the culture of other uh, countries like yeah. Korean uh, Korean movies, mm -hmm. yeah, have that too, and um, but I I don't see the Vietnamese movies mm -hmm. haven't do uh, this well yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I noticed that when I ask students about movies, they all say they prefer either Korean or Chinese. And that none of them prefer Vietnamese movies. Why? Why don't Vietnamese people like Vietnamese movies? <laughs> um, no, we we like the movie, uh, we, uh, which are uh, public in the theater more than mm. a series movie on the television. Mm. Mm, because the more money you pay for the product, yeah, the quality is better. And but I recently I see I've seen that the quality of the TV show and uh, like movie series on Vietnamese television uh, are quite good. They're quite a good quality. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen I haven't seen many. I've seen maybe five Vietnamese films, but to me they were as good as the Chinese films. Mm. Like, uh, for Where instance, I, wa I watched, uh, well, they're, they're all with, um, I can't remember her name, her her English name is Veronica Ngo, but uh, the first one I watched was Hai Fung. Hai Fung. Yeah, mm. and so I thought that was a very good movie, the The filming was very good, 
You know, mm. it, it looked like it didn't look like an old movie. It looked like a modern movie, right? Wow. With, mm-hmm. As far as like the camera and the techniques. So, mm. but, and it was a good story. So, mm-hmm. and then I watched maybe Once Upon a Time in Vietnam or something like that. Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Um, and that one, again, it reminded me of some of the Chinese movies because there's a lot of like flying around and magic and that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I've seen a few of her movies. I thought they were they they were at least as good as the Chinese movies. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I think the 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 action movie in Vietnam is quite good. Mm. Mm, like like the, the especially for the, the the crime like like catching like capturing crime movie is mm-hmm. very. Interested, interesting, you know. Okay. Yeah. 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 You should, you should uh, try. Like you should watch one of them. Can like, you? I, can you recommend a movie? Uh, yeah. This is a long. Um, yeah, a long I'm series. Yeah, that new one is about the. The. Like, how can I say, Matui? <laughs> In English? Like, more um, thing. Heroin? Oh, yeah. Drug related crimes. Oh, oh, heroin. Yeah. 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 Heroin. Okay. yeah. All right. But, yeah. It captures the, the, the link. Uh, okay, between, like, in uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, and in Vietnam, in Cambodia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to look. You know, I'm studying Vietnamese, so um, I'm 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 doing an experiment while I'm studying Vietnamese. So uh, right now, I'm focusing on reading and listening. So I need to find interesting movies. So I'll have to check that out. <laughs> okay. It's just uh, re- yeah. It- Quite old right now. Yeah, the first time I watched this movie was when I was in primary school mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, okay. but the, the quality is quite good. Yeah, the the, the story mm-hmm. is very catchy. Oh, well, good. Yeah, so yeah, I'll have to I'll have to check that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, some yeah. So usually like. I don't usually watch series movies except for like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, usually I watch just regular a uh, movie, but on television I only watch documentaries or sports. Mm. Be my, be my. Yeah. yeah, it is the, the correct name, the be correct title. My. Okay. Be my, but okay. Be my in Vietnam is uh, secret. Secret. Be yeah, a secret. Okay. Um, that is the rectangular. Rectangular. Triangle. That, uh, triangle. Rectangle is the. <laughs> <laughs> triangle. Sorry. Yeah. Triangle. Then yeah. Yeah. So Tamzak is triangle, and what was a uh, vam? Vang mean gold. Gold, okay. Oh, the golden triangle. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The golden triangle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The secret okay. of the golden triangle. Yeah, yeah. The secret of the golden triangle. All right. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we don't learn much about the golden triangle, but but we do learn. We do hear of it in school. We just don't mm. learn much about it. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I don't know about it. Yeah, we yeah. don't. We don't study about it. Right. Yeah. Well, because you know, in the West, we we study more about the. I can't remember what they call it. Uh, the triangle trade, right? Which is was from um, Africa to the Americas, to England or to Europe, right? So the Europeans would go to Africa. They would buy slaves. They would mm. the slaves would get taken to the <coughs> islands in the the Caribbean where they would. Uh, mm-hmm. take some of the slaves they would grab mm-hmm. some rum and some sugar 
and then they would come to America with the rest of the slaves, and they would take cotton and uh, cotton and tobacco from America back to Europe. So that was oh. called the the triangle trade. Oh, triangle trade. Let me check. Yeah. And it went from the the 1600s in America, the 1600s, but um, the Portuguese were the first, and it was almost almost immediately around the time. Yep, yep. Almost immediately around the time of Christopher Columbus in the 1400s, and the 1500s. Um, but in America, the the first slave arrived in 1619, so it went until. Um, I imagine all the way up until we ended slavery. I don't remember exactly when it ended, but um, I don't remember if the trade continued until 1865 or not. But you know, a- after the American Civil War, there were, the slavery was illegal. So, yeah. right, so, um, but I don't remember if that's when the if the triangle trade stopped before that or if that's when it stopped. But the first slave came to America in 1619. 1619. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the Portuguese had been bringing slaves since the 1400s to um, Brazil and mm-hmm. um, some of the South African countries. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, so we learn about the triangle trade. And somewhere along the way, I learned about the golden triangle, but I didn't learn much. You know, I just, I know what it's called and that's about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's the, the place so. where people. Like, yeah. Trade. Yeah. So, so the secret of the golden triangle be mat tamzek Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. And how about art? What can uh, what can art tell you about for international relations? How can art help you? Art. Well. Yeah. Do you think art can help you as much as movies or less? Oh, uh, art. You know, I for me, art is very mysterious yeah it's have something that i yeah i feel very admired mm-hmm. you know art for me is something that's very it's, you can see you can hear mm-hmm. you can feel it but you mm-hmm. can touch it right you know yeah for me artists can touch you can touch the the soul of it you know mm-hmm. and uh yeah, it's so mysterious for me, and uh, but I love art. Um, art help my like uh, mind of the international relations students mm-hmm. relax, and okay. um, yeah, it's give me calm and peaceful. Okay, so can you learn about the culture of a of a place by looking at its art? Yeah, maybe. I haven't tried yet. That oh, kind okay. of thing. Yeah, because okay. when I when I see a picture or something, yeah, I, I I can see the I can feel the uh, spirit mm. of the uh, the the author, the mm-hmm. the origins of the art. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so when I was at university, my first deg- uh, my first bachelor's degree mm-hmm. was in art education. Right? So I used to actually teach art. And, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And so I had to take a lot of art history classes. Mm-hmm. And when we look at paintings for history, we can see that a lot of them are records of the way people felt about different things at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So especially during the Renaissance. Um, which is like when uh, the European people rediscovered the uh, some of the technologies from ancient Greece and ancient Rome, mm-hmm. right? And they started caring more about being intellectual, right? Mm-hmm. That's that that time was called the Renaissance, and um, Renaissance. when you, yeah, Renaissance is French for rebirth, right? Re- ah, yeah, rebirth. Okay, right. So in French, it would be Renaissance, but. In, in English, we just say Renaissance. Renaissance, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of the rebirth of intellectualism. <laughs> and so my favorite time in art is between 16 and 1700. And my favorite art comes from Holland. 
or uh, Dutch, right? It's called the Dutch Golden Age. And they would paint very simple paintings. But what I liked about it is that when they painted a, a, what they call a still life, with like a bunch of things on a table, they were telling a story, right? Like they could um, sometimes, they, they were called a pankstelaven. Um, sometimes they would show like half-eaten fruit, right? Or they would show like a fruit that was rotting or things like that because they were talking about how temporary life is. Right. And so a lot of people, they look at that kind of painting and they think it's boring because all they see is the objects, but they don't think about what was important to the painter. Right. And so it was very common to uh, paint these objects to either show the wealth of the Dutch people, like they would bring many objects from um, from Asia back, um, especially uh, the pottery. Um Mm-hmm. And they would show like black pepper and things, which were which was very expensive. So, a lot of their still lives they have different kinds, but they would either show um, the how wealthy and excessive the the Dutch people were, or it would show like how temporary life is. Um, when they painted the landscape, it was always about religion, right? Um, so, right. So the the subject. Or I'm sorry, the object is the landscape, but the subject is being a good Christian, right? So the subject and the object of the painting are not always the same thing, right? And and what I like most about the the technical way that they paint is they always show like how light creates objects, right? Whereas the Italians they would they would make the object first, and then they would put the light on it. Right. Oh. So, but with the Dutch, it was nothing exists without light. Again, because the light is God, right? And God creates all. So, they would every time when they do something, you can tell they started by really thinking, where is the light, right? And they were very good at creating every kind of texture, right? Very realistic. Uh, but I loved their, um, I love their landscapes the most because I live in the country, or I, I was born in the countryside. Um, and I'm always I'm always happiest in the countryside, and so let me sh- um, figure out how to share my screen again somehow. I have some mm-hmm. paintings to show, but I don't remember how to share my screen. Um, ah, there we go. Four. Yeah. yeah and share there screen. We go. All right. Yeah. So. Like when they paint people, mm-hmm. um, this is one of my favorite painters, Peter Paul Rubens. They painted a lot of religious images. This is called the Adoration of the Shepherds. But you can see that there's no light, right? The light is baby Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And so he, the way, and you see that the light gradually fades and it's a, uh, you know, kind of cool. And then it gets dark back here. You can barely see this guy's face. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's but the light is blinding this guy, right? So, oh. right, this this style of painting where it's yeah, yeah. Ve- where it's yeah, very wait, bright. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of the, the theory of the, uh, the, the psychology. No. Yeah, it's similar. Yep. Yeah. You know. Um, the people of this time, like I said, the subject was always religion. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and when, if you read the Bible, they say that Jesus is the light. And this is the day Jesus was born. And his light is so bright that this guy is, can't see him. It's blinding, right? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I, I, it's called, th- this technique is called tenebrism or this quality where you have very dark and very bright and so I was playing around and all right so here is my drawing I was just playing around to kind of play with tenebrism right so this is all charcoal and I was trying to make some of the same things right uh, I, I like 
I like the uh, emotion that this style, it's called Baroque. The Baroque, yeah, Baroque. I like the emotion that it Baroque gives. Um, a regular painting loses that emotion a lot. But, um, so these are the Dutch paintings, and um, this is one of the most famous painters, is um, Johannes Vermeer. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how subtle his shadow gets. And that yes. there's light, light in the shadow. He's got sunlight. He's got candlelight. Right. He's only concerned with how does the light create the things, right? Um, yeah. And then, and the same with their, with their landscapes, right? It's all about light. Yeah. And so this actually came this this concept. This is another example of tenebrism, mm -hmm. right? And this concept um, actually made its way to America, and it was called American Luminism, right? Lu Luminism. Which basically, so they're they're really paying attention to how light creates the environment, right? Oh, American Luminism. Yeah, and you know, so, and I love like this is tenebrism, which is a very dark, very bright. There's a lot of movement and energy, and you know, um, I like the. Uh, I like the way that you can use color to impact your feelings, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is very calm and relaxed, you know. But this one is, it could be calming, but it's almost a little bit moody, right? Moody, yeah. And closer to my home, this is a, a, um, a the Hudson River School, which is in New York. It's a, a th it's not really a school; it's a philosophy, uh, right? Yeah, it's a philosophy of, of painting from somewhere near my home, and um, it's in New York. But I love their colors. The colors are beautiful, right? And it, and it, it's about about the light. And so there's a famous TV painter who he was born in Germany and taught himself to paint there, and he would paint on television, all right, doing the same thing. It was all about the light. Right, and he taught a guy by the name of Bob Ross, who's the most probably the most famous artist in America. Every American knows the name Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Yes, because Bob Ross, you you can't miss him because he has a a famous hair shape. Everyone ah. recognizes his hair, and the saying "Happy Little Trees." Right? Happy Little Trees. Yeah, and he, uh, he, he spoke with this very soft voice, and we're going to put a happy little cloud. He's just going to play all day, and he'd tell these little stories, right? Mm -hmm. And he was on public television. Um, so um, I used to, you know, I, I watched his, um, his paintings a lot, um, or his show, because I was a soldier for a long time, and I spent three years fighting in war. So I was very angry and aggressive for a long, long time. But watching his show calmed me down and relaxed me. And so then I started to learn art. And by watching his show, I said, I'm going to go to art school. Right? So I got my, uh, my degree in art. So wow. art to me, one, you can learn culture and you can learn history and things. But it's also a good way of therapy. Right? Um, yeah. Right. So like, uh, you know, impress me, you know. <laughs> yeah. From Before, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, I'm trying to find, right? So this is one of my drawings from art school, right? Where I just having fun and making. They're called shadow puppets, right? Okay. You shine a light on your hand and it makes a shadow. Yes. Right. Um. Other times, I was taking a photography class, and so I decided to draw this picture on my on my truck. Right. Oh, <laughs> what, what is this about? This is a famous painting, actually. This is a painting called "Liberty Leading the People." Liberty leading the people. Yep. Mm, this is. Oh. 
and it was the uh, during I forget if it was the second or the third. There was a uh, the French Civil War, basically. This is not the original. Let me find the original. That's the that's the original. <laughs> All right. So, um, basically, the there was an uprising where the uh, the the peasants overthrew the um, the rulers, the king, right? Mm-hmm. And so, Absolutely. yeah. And so, like this woman is not a real woman. She is a she's an allegory. What is called? It's like a metaphor. She is liberty. Right, oh. and so you notice that her arms and shoulders are very, very strong. Her legs are strong. Right, she um her, right, she almost looks like a man except for her chest, because she's yes. very, very powerful. Right, mm-hmm. and so the strength of liberty carrying France forward, mm-hmm. against the oppressors. Right, so. Um, what about the people lying down? They're dead. Who are they? Who are they're they? Dead. Oh, who are they? This one is a soldier. Mm-hmm. Right. This one is a soldier. This one yeah. is a peasant. Right. The so, person? a peasant, uh, a poor person. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know why. I don't know why his pants are off, but he's sitting here with no pants. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they're uh, they were fighting to overthrow the the national government because yeah, the yeah. government was oppressive. Yeah. And so these are dead soldiers. And liberty is leading the peasants against the, the government, right? And even the little boys, right? So yeah, he had two guns. <laughs> yeah, he has two guns. Yeah, because back guns. then, back then you could only shoot one at a time, right? So you had to have two guns. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, let's see where is. So, you know when did when was this picture? That was from eighteen. Ah, I forget eighteen. I don't remember. I remember the story, but not the time. <laughs> Let's see. Uh. Uh. Eight, eighteen seventy-three or something. Eighteen thirty. Oh, eighteen thirty. True. Yeah, by Eugene Delacroix. Yeah. And so, yeah, Eugène, uh, Eugène Delacroix. Uh, it was you know the July French? Revolution. Yeah, uh, French is my second language. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so I actually I learned French similar to the way you learn English. Um, I learned a lot of you know reading, grammar, and vocabulary, but we didn't wow. practice. We didn't practice much conversation. So why, why, so, why do you study French? Um, it was mandatory. Actually, it was it was mandatory. Um, how do I stop sharing? Stop sharing. Okay. I see my screen in my face stop on the sharing. screen. There we go. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, it was mandatory because I live in Vermont, which shares a border with Quebec, Canada, and oh. half of the people in Quebec speak French first. Mm. Right? And half, and the other half speak English. And so my primary school made it mandatory from third to sixth grade. You have to learn French. Oh. And so then I just continued to learn until I graduated from high school. Um, and also because a long time ago, my family was French. A long time ago. So yeah. your um, roots d- is French? Yeah. yeah. My, my father's side of my family um, in the 1700s moved from France to Canada. And my great 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 grandfather was born in Canada in eighteen twelve, but he already had an English name. So somewhere during that time, they became English. Um, my great great grandfather was born in America um, in eighteen thirty two, and then his son was born in eighteen seventy two. My grandfather in nineteen twelve, and my father in nineteen fifty two. They're all forty years apart, right? But. So, but sometime in the 1700s, they were still French. And, yeah, so that's the other reason is because that's part of my heritage is French. So I wanted to learn French. Um, so, yeah, I and took... you know I, uh, the, uh, the long, like, like, a uh, long uh, heritage? 
Yeah, the family history. That's only as far as I know. I don't know any further. But, <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people yeah, in the I West, know they, they, they... myself, my father, my grandfather, hmm. my... Yeah, that's all. Uh, but my well, grandfather. In the, <laughs> in the West, people uh, often will look, like there's actually websites you can hire and they will research your family to find all the way as far as they can. Oh. But in, um, in medieval times, like the you know, um, 1500s and 1600s and earlier, um, you had to prove if you were noble or a peasant, right? You had to know who your family was because mm-hmm. you, you, if you impersonated a noble person, you could be executed. And so you had to always be able, if you said you're, a, you're a, from a noble family, you mm-hmm. always had to be able to prove that. And mm-hmm. so they would know like five or six or ten generations of their history. But nowadays we don't know that stuff. But, um, <laughs> so, but there's, a, there's actually a website called Ancestry.com, Ancestry.com. That, will, that you can go and type your last name and they will then... So that's how I found my grand, my great 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 grandfather. His name was William, <laughs> and the reason uh, I know he that they were already English is because his, he was written as William and not Guillaume. Guillaume is the French. Guillaume is French for William. Oh. So because it said William and not Guillaume, I know they were already French, or they were already English by that time, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then my last name is an English version of. Of the the original name was G U Y O T Guyot, mm-hmm. and in Canada there are several variations that all sound like Guillet, right? Guillet. Or go, yeah, Guillet, right? And if I were to pronounce my name in French, it would be Guillet. Guillet. Yeah, but in English we say Guyet. Um, so there are many variations, and I can look because like you know G uh, in French two L's is a Y sound. So I can look at the saying like, oh, that's from somewhere in my family a long time ago, somewhere, somewhere. So there's about five or six different spellings that mm. at one at some point in history, we were all the same family. But, yeah, so. Yeah, it's great. But. A long story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, in Vietnam, we do have that kind of thing. But the, yeah, my name is, my last name is Do. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's come, yeah, you know, the, the, the Vietnamese is quite similar to Chinese. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, uh, most of the, the characters uh, in Vietnam uh, is from Chinese. And uh, we just use our own ways pronunciation, pronunciation and um, the, the Latin letters characters from yep. the history from the the French the Western uh, friar friar right friar oh the friar the, 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 the like the religion the monks uh, the friars yeah the friar yeah yep. Yep. they uh, they 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 uh, spread the the, char- the Latin characters yeah so yeah, that um, the, the that is the com- Vietnamese combination combination yeah. <laughs> combination of uh, yeah that those things and um, so mm, we do have the meaning for our name yeah every word uh, in Vietnamese and in Chinese so my name is. In uh, Chinese roots, it means uh, successful. Mm. My last name, yeah. successful. And but in Vietnamese, in northern of Vietnam, mm. the O means beans. Okay. And yeah. we have another word to uh, to describe this meaning is Dao. Oh. Oh, and oh. is the same mm-hmm. for beans in Vietnamese. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and 
and then lots of my uh, relatives in the past because of the war and something they changed the name the last mm. name from Do to Dao ah. yeah yeah so uh, in the the family generation mm. yeah mm, like there is a wall we write all the name of our relatives on that yeah right. there is some people have that that's last name no mm -hmm. yeah that is our foreign relatives yeah and yeah so do you know what that that drawing is called in english what? do you know what we call that drawing what shows all your relatives do you know what we call that know. in english I, I, don't, I don't know i don't know it's called, just... a, a, it's called a family tree Oh, yeah, family tree. Yeah. And so when I said that, like, the noble people had to prove, yeah, exactly, yes. mm -hmm. right? The noble people, they would keep a scroll, right, scroll. with every generation who's who, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I said they have to prove it, they would have to show their family scroll to mm -hmm. say, this is me, right? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Well, after uh, after we separated from England, thankfully we did not keep that same process in America, because I think that would be very obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, let's see. So yeah, art history. I love I like art history, but I also love pottery. Um, I used to teach pottery. Wow. <laughs> and so <laughs> at that uh, actually before. Uh, that's what led me to learn Eng uh, to get my degree for English. Um, I was teaching pottery, and half my students were foreigners. And when I teach things, I always try to relate new things to something you already know, right? And so at the time, I used a lot of like culture things, but the foreigners didn't always know what I was talking about, right? Because they're from a different culture. So I, I had to find a different way to explain what I wanted them to do, right? Mm. And so, I, so yeah. I ended up. I thought I, you know, I enjoyed it and it was fun. So um, then I decided I would go back to school and I earned my master's to teach English. Yeah, but uh, one of the, and I use it now. I use it as an example. Like if um, when you're practicing learning English or something, right? I always say, you know, practice with something that you know well in Vietnamese. Because that way you don't have to focus on the topic. You can focus on the vocabulary. So mm -hmm. because I used to teach pottery, right? Mm -hmm. If I go to Hoi An and I watch somebody teach a, how to make a cup, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have to pay attention to what they're doing because I already know how to make a cup. But I, but I know that if I see them doing this over and over, and I hear the same word, now I know this means pull, right? Or if I see them holding their hands and leaning, I know that they mean center the clay. So whatever word they're saying, now I can learn those that vocabulary, because I already know what they're saying. I just don't know the words they're using, right? Oh. So. So yeah, I, I like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. And so. Wow. Well, the way you learn. Yeah. Language. Yes. Yeah. So my experiment. I know I mentioned an experiment. Um, normally, the experts say you should only learn ten words a day, and you have to use them, use them, use them immediately. Right. Mm -hmm. I disagree because uh, a two-year-old will learn more than ten words a day. Right. Nobody gives a two-year-old a list of words, right? That two-year-old says, Mommy, what's that? Mommy, what's that? Mommy, what's that? Mommy, what's that? Right? And you're like, a ball, a ball, a ball, right? <laughs> right? It's like, it's still a ball, right? So, but that's how they learn. But they can learn, you know, 20 or 30 words a day, right? And they're not using it because they can't really speak yet. They can't make a sentence. They, you know, they say two words, me want, Right? What that me want? But uh, they only say two word sentences in in America anyway. Um, you know, it's usually not until they're almost four before they'll say a full sentence, right? Mm -hmm. So, by uh, what I 
like I did, I learned to read about 3,000 words, 3,500 words. Um, and I learned it in six weeks. I was learning at least 100 words a day, right? But I wasn't learning how to use the words. I was only learning just like that. Mommy, what's that? What does this mean? Right? So, um, and then after that, I spent four weeks to make sure I knew all of the verb tenses and some things about grammar. And now I'm listening and re- I'm listening and reading for 10 weeks. And then I will speak and write for 10 weeks. And then after that, I will practice um, fluency, right? So it's a 40-week cycle. And I'm trying to find if there's a more efficient way than just 10 words a time, right? Because I, I'm a very suspicious person. And I think that the reason, a lot of the reason that, like, universities say, oh, you can only learn 10 words is because of money. They, they need you to keep coming to class, and so if I tell you it's going to take you six years to be fluent, then I, right, then I know I'm going to get your money for six years. Mm-hmm. Right. But there are people who, like, you know, there are English speakers who learn Chinese in two years to HSK6. Right. So um, I use a lot of different, I, actually, I use the, uh, a lot of the concepts I learned in my master's program because I'm teaching English as a foreign language. It doesn't really matter what the foreign language is. Teaching a foreign language doesn't change. Um, so I'm using the same concepts, but I'm trying to find what's the easiest way. So the easiest way to start reading is to make sure I can read a lot of words first. right? And so then after that, then I need to be able to put together sentences and things. right? So doing my experiment. But um, I learned... Yeah, I learned French the traditional way, the same like you guys learn English. Um, I also took a semester of Spanish following the same tradition. Mm -hmm. I learned Chinese for a year on Duolingo. And I learned to read like 630 characters. um, And I was able to have conversations, very short conversations. I actually stopped studying Chinese when I started um, teaching with ABBN. And then when I started teaching with ABBN... I learned the uh, Vietnamese alphabet and tones because I have to know what sounds do you know how to make, right? Mm-hmm. And so that way, when I'm correcting somebody's pronunciation, mm-hmm. I, I know, right? Um, and so it led to a, a document where I used the Vietnamese alphabet to teach English pronunciation. Right? Oh, and I don't you have know. to research for, like, yeah, you make many efforts. To teach English, to teach language for people, yeah. It's yeah. interesting, fascinating. So, so I will show you before I, I've got to get going soon here. I'm a little bit late for something, but um, I will okay. show you this one document real quick. Because okay. I, I, I share this with everybody, so um, I want to show you. And I don't think you need it because you speak very, very well, but... Um, it's a, it's still fun to practice. Mm. And let's see. And so I teach people how to change the spelling of words, to yeah. change reading writ, um, written English to spoken English, right? To read, read, read written English and English. Right. And so, the idea is that, you know, when we write, we write very long sentences. When we speak, we speak in ideas. And so a native person would say this entire idea, it's going, to, it's going to sound like one word. There are no spaces. How to read written English in a conversational voice. Mm. Kind of an intermediate way would to say it in two words. How to read written English in a conversational voice. Mm-hmm. And sort of a beginner way would be three. How to read written English in a conversational voice. Right, so we have to be able to find our ideas or thought groups and identify the small phrases. And yes, then, of yes. course, I, I teach all the pronunciation rules. There are six rules that matter. All the other rules don't really matter. There's only six. Right? Mm-hmm. Correct number of syllables, syllable stress, and every consonant sound. Consonant and then sound. Yeah, intonation, phrase mm-hmm. stress, and then the final tone. And then because I mostly teach Vietnamese, I use the Vietnamese as much as I can. Yes. Um, our final tones, we have four. 
right? We either have an even voice if there's no punctuation. Mm -hmm. We use zohoi, zohoi, zosa, or komyo, right? Which is like the high even, really, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. really? and, and then I have linking rules. Um, but what I do is I teach you how to do this. So I find all my groups. You know, I, I, I separate them by putting lines after the punctuation. Mm -hmm. And then I have to find the stress syllable right, of every word, the, the, the most important word of every phrase. Mm -hmm. And then... And then I rewrite the word the way it sounds. And I make sure to include my linking. So now, if you pretend that this is Vietnamese and you sound it out, you can you... Uh, yeah, try it, uh, try it out. I want to see how it goes. So. She looks like you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's work. It works. Yeah, yeah. Right. She so. looks like you. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it, it works. <laughs> right. So I do this first, and then um, for more advanced people, I teach reduced pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the proper sentence here, but we wouldn't have been so tired if we'd gone to bed earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. It's reduced pronunciation, and it's more how native people would speak to each other. Yeah, 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 so that's right. Right. But, and then to practice fluency is how to group your words. Right. And yes. if you group your words correctly, like if you can, if you have 90% pronunciation and you can read this as it's written, in my opinion, that's like an IELTS 6.5. And the only r r difference between that and a native is that a native takes away all the spaces, right? And so, is, you know, obviously besides pronunciation. So it sounds faster. Sometimes honesty isn't the best policy. A patient showed up at our medical office and asked, right? So we just don't have as many spaces. Yes, thank and, you. Right. Um, so, if you're interested, the south, the ending sound. Right? Yes. Um, so, in 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 this one, we we re we just move the letters to connect them. It's called linking, right? Mm -hmm. But in this one, because we smush the words together, mm -hmm. there is no final sound. Because this yeah. is one, this is one word. So now you have to say everything you see, right? Yes. So I try to make things a little bit easier, and I think that that's the easiest way I found to explain things. <laughs> you know, and then some trips uh, or tips. There's a list to the five thousand most common words. Wow. And five thousand common words. Yeah, and uh, basically, in order to score a B two, you need to be able to use the five thousand most common words in a sentence, uh, which are just these the words on the left. Um, some of the students have started translating, and then you have, you have many synonyms. So it's really it's um, about four thousand words on the left, but if you add these, you'll get about five thousand. Oh. And. And then common collocations, right? Yeah. These words often come together, and when you say them, they always sound like one word, right? Have to, there is, there are, such as, going to, of course, right? So we have um, the first two are general English, and most of this are general English, and the rest are all academic English, right? And so they, yes. people translated on this side. The final page, no one has translated yet, but <laughs> so, but um, so you have a link to that if you you know it's a good uh, good measure, and then if you're looking for things to read, if you click this link, um, I often yeah. Yeah. yeah I have people practice these because they're short if they need to practice their pronunciation. They're short, so it's easy to repeat. Mm -hmm. But, you, like I said, you speak very well, so you don't really need to do that. But if you're ever looking for more cultural knowledge or mm -hmm. things, there's a lot of long articles. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, this is, if you're ever in, like. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm so. Yeah. 
Anyway, I'm some... <laughs> interested in that topic, you know. Oh, oh okay. Well, yeah, good. yeah. Recently, I watched a boy love uh, movie, you know. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm interested in that. Okay, so I will uh, I will share that document to your email so you have it. That way, you have both of those links. Yeah, but, thank you. But, yeah. So, but yeah, that's uh, I, I do things a, a little differently, and I'm trying to follow the same approach um, to teach myself Vietnamese, right? So right oh. now I'm using Duolingo to listen and to speak, um, mm. but but I don't take any classes, so I'm teaching yeah. myself Vietnamese, um, wow. trying to do the same yeah. things. Yeah, I'm planning to study Chinese by myself too, but I ah. think yeah. Um, you know, I can sing Chinese. I can, you know, I can use the pinyin mm -hmm. uh, characters. Yeah, I can uh, make a conversation if I practice. Yep. But yeah, because I like Chinese movies. Um, I like China, China Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there are many motivation for me to yep. study Chinese. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but I think I need someone to mentor me. Mm. Uh, at the first time, I study a new language. Mm. Yeah, because Chinese is one of the uh, the hardest language to study in the world. Well, yeah. I think that speaking Chinese was easy. Yes. Um, the hardest was reading and writing. Yeah, right. reading and writing. I and so the the best way I found for learning their characters is to use memory tricks. Memory tricks. Yeah. So like I found a company called Mandarin Blueprint, and they teach you uh, a, a system to make memory tricks for every character. Um, mm. I th I think it's a little too complicated for simple characters like the character uh, Zhen for person. Run, right, yeah. right. I don't need a memory trick because it's easy. I can see a little person running. I don't need yeah. to memorize it, right? But other things are more complicated. So by using memory tricks, which is another way that um, uh, I, I use to learn Vietnamese, um, right? For instance, uh, my favorite American football player, his name is Tom Brady, and he has won the most championships in history. So I can learn two Vietnamese words by knowing his name. I can I can learn Tang, which means to win, right? And I can oh, make yeah, a sentence, yeah. right? Tom always wins. And I said, oh, okay, right? Or I can say, hey, Tom's system works, right? And then I learn, hey, Tang, right, for system, right? So I can use, they're called mnemonic devices, memory tricks. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very easy to remember things. Yes, yes, that's right. But the trick is, it has the memory has to be important to you, right? That's right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, you can't I think like. It trusts you. you know. yeah, yeah. Usually, if it's from your childhood or something that's really important to you, mm -hmm. and then it's easy to remember, right? Yeah, like I think that our brain works by images. Uh, yeah, image in images, images, images. Yeah, images. Yeah, uh, images. images. And um, um, like, yeah, and by the way we write, it's come from e listening, writing, and our hands writing, and uh, the is what we see from what we see, yeah, repeatedly. Yeah. 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 So, yeah we need time. For yeah. learning a language, yeah, I, right. yeah, I, I love languages. You know, um, when you learn a lot, I think you learn a lot of languages. How yeah, um, Vietnamese mm -hmm. is my fifth language, but um, I can only have a conversation in two. <laughs> I can yeah. have a conversation in English or French, but I've, I've started learning five total. Oh, yeah. So when you study languages, you. You 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 learn about the culture too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you have to because they're married, right? You you can't yeah. you can't have language without culture. Yes, right? yeah, when they're, they're... people create the language, they create mm -hmm. the culture. Right. Right. Yeah. 
I, I uh, in my the first uh, subject in my university is uh, the world history. Yep. Um, the civilization. The civilization of the world. Yeah. And uh, and he said that uh, my teacher, my lecturer, he said that uh, when people. Words. Yeah, when uh, people um, create their language, they create their their culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the, and the same way, your culture also creates your language, right? They they create each other, right? But yeah, yeah, so yeah. you 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 might be interested. I sent you sociocultural theory, right? And that's one of the the guiding theories of the way that I teach languages, right? Mm. Is that I, I we're not teaching a language just a language, but we're um, we're teaching for cultural literacy. You should be able to be who you are in the foreign culture, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and it's but yeah, it's the idea that culture and language cannot be separated. Right. Otherwise, it's some you're going to make a lot of mistakes if you if you only learn the language and nothing of the culture, you will end up being very offensive to people. Um, you can make a lot of mistakes. So the two are married. You you have to learn both. Yes, right. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, this is uh, ten uh, half past ten in Vietnam yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, like I said, I'm a little bit late for another appointment I have, but. Okay. Um, so but yeah, it was very so. nice to yeah, it was very nice to meet you, and yes. I look I'm forward so to seeing you again. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for um, like teaching me this lesson today. Yeah, um, you 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 impressed me a lot by your um, your experience in arts and oh. and uh, like the, the your knowledge about learning foreign language. Yes, and oh, well, you, you. you share a lot of new techniques for me to study a new language, a new language. Yeah. Oh well, I'm glad you were glad you enjoyed it, and yes. I said I look forward to seeing you in the future. Um, and I always try to practice my Vietnamese, so hang up lại em vào tuần tới. Okay. See you hang up lại thay. All right. Yes. Uh, let's right. check it out. Let's check the bí mật tam giác vàng. The Which one? Bí mật tam giác vàng. Oh, oh yes, I have to. Yeah, the, the secret yes. of the golden triangle. Yes. yes. Movie. Uh, uh, they they can see uh, bí mật tam giác vàng. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. All right. Yes. Yeah, bye bye. See you later. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. <cười> wow, trời chị chị nhắn cho em rồi coi giờ tiếng rưỡi để sợ okay, con nhận không mà em nhận người nghe sướng điện. <cười> 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 <cười>